With Sigma being added into the game just in time for the Overwatch League playoffs, a new meta has arisen centered around the combination of Sigma and Doomfist. It's been seeing a huge spike in popularity and some pretty good success, but how exactly does it work? We're going to examine the new Doomfist Sigma composition in this episode of Behind the Action. Tanks. Pairing Sigma with Orisa offers an excellent balance of protection and damage. Orisa has a 900 HP shield that replenishes every 8 seconds, and Sigma has a 1500 HP shield that he can recall and charge at will. On top of this, both characters are able to shoot while their shields are deployed. Sigma also has one of the best tank ultimates in the game, Gravitic Flux, which can displace enemies and deals enormous amounts of damage. His accretion is also one of the strongest stuns in the game, and deals 50 damage. With such a strong emphasis on shields, heroes like Ana, Zenyatta, and Baptiste are not favorable, as their healing is easily blocked by barriers. Therefore, Moira is the support of choice in the new meta, as her biotic orb can heal through shields, while her coalescence can deal damage through shields. Furthermore, her fade ability allows her to escape damage like Reaper's Death Blossom, an incoming Doomfist, or Sigma's ultimate. And rounding out this support duo is Lucio, whose speed boost pairs perfectly with the DPS combo of Reaper and Doomfist. His sound barrier also happens to be the best ultimate to counter Gravitic Flux, and his healing output is not hampered by the presence of shields. Reaper and Doomfist are the two primary DPS characters in this composition. Reaper has immense damage at close range, the ability to self-heal, Shadow Step which lets him teleport to the back line and assassinate squishies, a wraith form that allows him to escape if things get hairy, and, of course, his Death Blossom, which can deal absurd amounts of damage and win teamfights. Doomfist, much like Moira, is able to damage enemies through shields. Coupled with immense mobility and escape options, and a powerful stun capable of shutting down enemy ultimates, Doomfist brings with him high damage output as well as tactical utility. So, now that we've got all the heroes out of the way, how do team fights play out? The neutral fight, one where neither team has their ultimates yet, is generally decided by which team's Moira gets coalescence first. To facilitate this, Moira will typically open with a damage orb to get extra ultimate charge. Orisa and Sigma attempt to push their shields further into no man's land, while Reaper and Doomfist harass the enemy's back line. Another deciding ability is Orisa's Halt, which synergizes very well with other ultimates. Halt can set up rocket punches, seismic slams, and uppercuts from Doomfist. It can give Sigma and Moira tons of ultimate charge by pulling enemies into their primary fire and biotic orb, and sets up huge boot plays from Lucio. The Halt there, and then the punish into the drink. Sigma can use his Kinetic Grasp to absorb damage from Reaper and Doomfist while the rest of the team focuses them down, often forcing the enemy DPS to retreat early. Sigma can also give his team an early advantage by landing his accretion from a long distance. For example, in this clip of Gator from the Atlanta Rain, we see him using Kinetic Grasp to counter Sabiolbi's flank, and then guarantees the kill on Libero by hitting him with accretion, securing the fight and the point for his team. Six stone to the face, stun is through, and they pick up one point. Finally, Doomfist. Some teams have made his main priority targeting enemy supports. Although it's risky sending him that far into the enemy back line, one well-placed rocket punch has the potential to win an entire fight. So, in retaliation, Orisas have begun prioritizing tracking the opposing Doomfist and using Fortify to block their attacks. Another possible playstyle is a more defensive Doomfist, perhaps best exemplified by Bazi in the Hangzhou Sparks match against the LA Gladiators. Bazi's main priority was to keep Hydration's Doomfist in check, and he accomplished this by using his Rocket Punch to counter Hydration's Rocket Punch, by using his ultimate at the same time as Hydration to secure an easy kill once he landed. And once he took Hydration out of the equation, he would move on to the offensive and pounce on the enemy back line. Sigma can also peel in a similar fashion, using accretion to interrupt the enemy DPS and even outright kill them. For example, Rhea uses accretion to deny Hydration's rocket punch and ends up getting the kill. Meanwhile, Bazi bides his time while his team has the advantage, waiting for the gladiators to make a mistake. This allows them to eliminate Big Goose 
and when he spots Hydration charging up his Rocket Punch once again, Bazi is in perfect position to slam him into the wall, protecting his supports and securing another kill for the Spark. And to top it off, the Spark's superior play here is rewarded, with Bazi having an 87% ultimate charge, while Hydration is only at 16%. Speaking of ultimates, let's take a look at how the real game changers come into play. As we've mentioned before, Orisa's Halt is one of her best abilities. Take this instance of Roar's Halt comboing directly into Hydration's Meteor Strike. Not only do they take out both of the Spark's supports, they also deny IDK from getting his Sound Barrier off. Another popular combo is Gravitic Flux into Meteor Strike. Sigma's ult leaves enemies caught by it at half health and immobile, allowing Doomfist to come in and finish off the weakened opponents. Many have been calling this the Space Slam. Reaper's ultimate usually comes out towards the end of fights, when disruptive abilities like Accretion, Rocket Punch, and Arisa's Shield have already been used. However, this is not always the case, and Reaper players often look for opportunities to flank or teleport into the enemy back line. Doomfist's ultimate is usually used as an escape ability, allowing him to jump onto the enemy back line, do massive amounts of damage, and get away scot-free. However, he can also use it to counter enemy ultimates like Moira's Coalescence and Reaper's Death Blossom, as these channeled abilities leave the characters vulnerable and unable to escape. Moira's Coalescence can be used to either heal teammates who are low on health, or support pushes by dealing damage through shields and letting her team gain map control. Coalescence leaves Moira vulnerable, so having a friendly Doomfist on the prowl to stun the enemy Doomfist is very valuable. Here, for example, Bazi attempts to rocket punch Shaz to stun him out of his coalescence, but Hydration denies him by rocket punching him at the same time, cancelling the stun and allowing Shaz to continue using his coalescence. Sigma Doomfist has taken the Overwatch League by storm, and as players continue to master Sigma's high level of difficulty, we're excited to see how far this meta can be pushed. Thanks for watching this episode of Behind the Action. Do you think Sigma Doomfist is going to last? What meta do you think could counter it? Are we going to see lots of Sigma in the Overwatch League Finals? Let us know in the comments below.